The scene begins with Catherine, a lonely and socially awkward girl who seems to be haunted by the death of her parents in a car wreck. She continues on her day, hoping that maybe her parents would pick her up for winter break, but sadly, faces the reality of being stranded in school. Another girl named Rose is also staying for mistakenly, informing her parents to pick her up on a later date. But, turns out, she's pregnant and does not want to deal with her parents yet. Rose is a senior of Catherine. Thus, she's instructed by Father Morgan to watch over her, but with the aid of two other sisters. At the start of the winter break, Rose is quite harsh with Catherine, telling her that she will not be her nanny and that she is not allowed to enter her room. In addition to this, she shares the chilling story of two sisters who were found worshiping Satan in the school basement three years ago. This might be the cause of presence of an evil force in the school, which may be awakened by the invitation through a ritual done by the sisters. Rose leaves Catherine at night to go out with her boyfriend. Thus, she is left alone again at school. That same night, the telephone rings, and this is when creepy things started happening to Catherine. When Rose returns, she goes to check on Catherine in her room, but she's not there, which doesn't seem unordinary at first. She then goes to the toilet to freshen up, but she's disturbed upon hearing weird noises from the radiator, which she traces from the basement. As she gets deep into the basement, she continuously hears muffled voices. She looks through the window at the boiler room and is shocked to see Catherine worshiping the fire. Rose surely thinks it was strange, but seeing that Catherine is young, she wouldn't do something demonic or any of that sort. Rose later confronts her, but she assumes Catherine was just sleepwalking. The girl reveals that her parents are dead. Also, Catherine tells her that she smells pretty, which hints that Catherine knows she's pregnant. Rose feels uneasy from the event of seeing Catherine's unusual activity and the chilling conversation of her dead parents. Thus, she blocks her door to secure herself in her room. At midnight, Catherine is seen having a convulsion in bed, which causes her body to backbend. The next day, Catherine appears to be speaking on the phone with someone whom Rose assumes is her parents. But Catherine cryptically responds that it was someone telling her that she can't stay in school, but she can stay with him. Rose is confused with her pertaining to someone other than her parents, but Catherine eventually says it's the headmaster, Father Morgan. They continue on with their daily routine by having a meal together with the two sisters, but something is undeniably off with Catherine. When it was time to pray for the meal, Miss Prescott, one of the sisters, notices Catherine not praying. Thus, she requests that she lead the prayer for them. Before Catherine finishes the prayer, she vomits a lot of milky substance on their table and they bring her to the infirmary to check on her. While the sisters are checking on her health, Mrs. Drake, the other sister, hands Catherine the medicine, but they're shocked to hear Catherine swear at her. For the second time, the phone rings and the two sisters confirm it was Father Gordon. Catherine says it's the headmaster, even before hearing who it was, which creeps out Rose. Miss Prescott calls for Rose and instructs her to shovel the path between the houses to the earth because Father Morgan will be returning later in the day. Rose reluctantly does so just before it gets dark, but later she finds that the house is locked, which is odd, but ignores it and returns to her room to rest instead. Later that day, Father Gordon returns to the school with the police officer and finds the house still locked. After going around the house, they get through the other door, where a sinister murder scene confronts them. The two sisters are brutally killed inside the house. It is obviously done by Catherine, who is clearly under the influence of Satan after showing manifestations of odd behavior. Needless to say, no sane child could cruelly kill two adults, but Catherine sure did. Through flashbacks from Catherine's perspective, they show that out of loneliness, and the inability to accept her parents' death, Satan takes advantage of her condition and controls her into doing sinister things. The series of events following from before the bleak winter break until the time she's stranded show that she is a broken and lost girl struggling to cope with the trauma of her past. The past of losing her parents is something that the headmaster is unaware of, for Catherine struggles with that reality and cannot even open it up to him. In addition to this, is her eerie encounter with the telephone, where she tries to contact her parents, but is instead greeted by a demonic voice confirming that her parents are gone and instructing her to do the unthinkable. 
the evil force even promises her that she can stay with him for a long time, which somehow comforts the lonely girl. With things turning for the worse, Rose is definitely under the threat of losing her life too. When she wakes up from sleep, she checks on her stomach and sees a bump. When Rose heads to the toilet to freshen up, she hears someone enter, but there's no response to her. She then leaves to check if anyone is outside, but she ends up seeing bloody sheets down the stairs instead. This shocks Rose and is surprised by the attack of Catherine, who mercilessly stabs her multiple times and eventually kills her. Later on, the police officer traces the blood to the basement, where Catherine is seen in a ritual with three heads beside her. The officer is shocked to witness the terrifying scene and threatens to shoot fire if Catherine remains aggressive. Catherine honors her sinister act for Satan, screaming with a heavy voice, which prompts the officer to shoot her. Catherine soon wakes up in a hospital bound on the bed. Father Morgan greets her and performs an exorcism on her. Catherine hovers from the bed until Satan is successfully removed from her. Catherine sees the evil form one last time and begs it not to go, but immediately disappears. But the movie doesn't end here. Joan, the mysterious girl who is seen in one of the beginning scenes, is actually revealed to be Catherine after nine years. Catherine goes under the disguise of Joan, who according to the flashback, is murdered by her. Also, repeated flashbacks of what appear to be scenes from a mental hospital keep coming back to her, but it further shows that she escaped from the institution. While alone and confused again, she waits at a shelter where a man, who is later revealed to be Rose's father, Bill, takes her under his wing as he is reminded of his daughter through Catherine. This is a creepy coincidence of meeting the murderer of his daughter and at the same time being reminded of her. They go to a hotel where Catherine wakes up alone in a room and is somewhat confused considering she was in a car a few hours ago. After her shower, a bullet scar is seen from the back of her shoulders, which further confirms that she is indeed Catherine when she was shot by the officer a few years ago. Bill visits her in the room and kindly treats her and even shares about his faith. Bill is a good-natured father who seems to be very generous and kind to Catherine. He later invites her for dinner, where he tells her about Rose, who was gone nine years ago, and that they're visiting her at Bramford every year for her death anniversary. Catherine doesn't seem to sympathize with this pain and looks at him distantly. He later shows her a picture of Rose, and she somewhat displays unfamiliarity with who she is, even saying that Rose is pretty. She suddenly excuses herself to the toilet, where she strangely laughs at the coincidence of encountering Rose's parents, which strengthens her resolve to continue her journey to Bramford. When she returns to Bill, he tells her that they will be getting back on the road immediately to avoid the delay to their destination because of the incoming bad weather. Later on, while waiting for Bill, Linda, Rose's mother, engages in a not-so-friendly conversation with Catherine. Linda frankly tells her that Bill tells everyone that they remind them of Rose, and that Catherine strangely does not look like Rose at all. She also shares that they are having a hard time coping with the loss of their daughter, but they're trying to get by. They soon hit the road, and the atmosphere becomes heavy when Linda gets emotional upon revealing how Rose was murdered. While they're almost nearing their destination, Catherine suddenly tells them to pull over and says that she's getting sick. Bill kindly pulls over against Linda's will, which causes Linda to be upset. When they pull over in the middle of nowhere, Catherine suddenly attacks them with a knife she stole from the restaurant at the hotel. She brutally murders the couple inside the car. After killing them, she throws up from doing the sinister act, but it's too late to turn back now. She later recovers and then proceeds to put something in a suitcase. She then cleans herself and strangely applies makeup as if nothing sinister happened at the moment. Upon reaching Bramford, Catherine lights a lighter in the basement, clearly anticipating being reunited where she first encountered the evil force. The whole school is abandoned. Thus, the boiler room is left cold and unused for years. Catherine is somewhat expecting the boiler to still be hot, but it's not. She leaves the school and is very upset about not being able to get what she wanted for years. She's left alone again, and this frustrates her after going through a lot, for the comfort that she longs for, that once was, but never to be felt again. 
Well, I realized that dealing with trauma is a huge factor in healing, and that to be able to heal, we must first face it head on. What are your thoughts on this? If you want to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on our next videos and playlist on the screen. Thanks for watching!